buddy. That was quite the face you were just making, Doug. <laughs> like, <laughs> hello. Just thinking things over. Deep in thought. <laughs> deep, deep in thought. Uh, happy. Am, am, am I still blurry or is this okay? Yeah, you're okay. Okay, okay. Just making sure. We're trying slightly different lighting here. Um, going to see if that helps the blurriness or not. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I see we're already at a level five hype trade. Thank you, Chad. The hype is so real. Thank you so much. And surreal. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, I'm it's involved in so real. <laughs> Dare we say. Um, so let's get to the rules so that we can get to answering your wonderful questions. Uh, first and foremost, we give priority to the bit messages since that is some real world money spent. Towards the end of stream, sometimes we do have time for highlighted questions, but please do save your highlighting towards the end of stream. If you highlight it now, um, we can't scroll back up and see it. Also, highlighting a question or comment does not guarantee that we will see it or read it. Um, please keep your messages short and to the point. Um, the longer they are, the faster I have to read it and the more likely it is that I'm going to miss something and we don't have time to repeat it. Um, so the shorter, the better. Um, that does also apply for multi-part questions. Please avoid anything longer than like three parts if absolutely necessary. Again, sometimes then we just lose it and it's, it just becomes a whole thing. Um, please do not repeat yourself over and over again. You can get timed out or even banned if you're going to continuously do it. Um, that kind of applies to the bit messages as well. Um, we have been live for seven minutes and haven't even started answering questions. And there is already a list. We will get to it. It is very, very rare that we actually miss a bit question. We can sometimes get up to an hour behind. So please just be patient. Um, please, no spoilers. I have not had a chance yet to watch Secret Invasion, okay? Don't spoil it for me, chat, I swear. Also, we're still not doing spoilers for The Flash. It's literally been out for one week. <laughs> Give people don't, don't a worry. chance. Nobody's gonna see it. <laughs> so just watch the spoilers, please. Um, spoilers, that's totally fine because everybody can predict what's gonna happen anyway. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I haven't cool. seen it. I already know, like beat for beat what's going to happen in that movie. <laughs> um, please maybe check to make sure someone else hasn't already asked the question that you are going to ask. It's not that you're in trouble or anything. It's just we feel bad if you're the fourth person to ask Doug about Owl House and we have to just be like, oh, we already talked about that and just move on and kind of gloss over your uh, question. Um, we'll still answer it, but yeah, you might get like the table scraps kind of thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think that's it. I feel like I missed something, but it might have just been because you interrupted me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it be. I, I'm that asshole. I, I just screwed it all up. I'm so sorry. I know. And I, I got to watch you literally in the same room behind me yesterday, mimic me and mime me, and it was um, it was a thing of beauty. Um, I'll go ahead, continue to do it now when you're out of reach of these hands. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll match up first. There we go. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I can do it there. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that Disney nerd. Thank you for the 38 month subscription. Thank Welcome you. back. Appreciate that. Oh, how these beautiful 38 months have flown by. Also, hello, Heather and Dougie's day out. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. Thank you so much. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. So Little Mermaid is severely underperforming. Elemental is now Pixar's biggest bomb. And that Primo show is getting hate similar to, if not worse than, Thundercats Roar and High Guardian <laughs> Spice. Maybe not true for the video itself, but the title, Disney's Doing So Good, is aging worse than milk, it seems. Well, watch the video. There might be a drop. Just a drop of irony in there. Yes, yes, it's pretty it's pretty much agreeing with you in the video. <laughs> and that's even before half of these things came out. Alex loves musicals. Thank you for the hundred bits. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. What did you guys think of the first secret invasion episode that dropped? I quite enjoyed it. I haven't seen it yet. Um Me neither. I hate to say it. I'll probably wait and see if it's worth it. I do love Samuel L. Jackson. Um but again, I'm just catching up on so many things to watch. I kind of want to hear if it's worth my time. You know what I mean? Uh, it's if fair. it's just another, yeah, you know, spy stuff, whatever. And it's okay. I'll probably skip it, you know, but if it's like, no, like it's good, man. It's like some of Jackson's best stuff. I'll definitely check it out. 
Small Movie World, thank you for that 38 month subscription. Welcome back, thank appreciate you. that. Woo, second stream within a month, very rare these days. Obviously belated, but can I just say the Kids WB bloopers are the best in NC history. Small Watched them so many times already, I seriously day. can't decide which is the funniest. Although Tamara confidently saying, I can stick my ass up is a top <laughs> contender. Uh, I love watching those bloopers. I don't know. That's become some of my favorite stuff to put. I used to watch like old reviews just to be like, you know, okay, does should I mimic that? Should I not do like, you know, learn from the stuff you've done from yeah. the past? But now just like, yeah, the bloopers in the first viewings are the ones where I'm just like, I just need to relax and like just remind me so man i got i got a good job good people good everything it's like i, I just love putting out like the first viewings and uh, uh the bloopers and stuff like that i don't know it's just uh it, it it makes you feel warm and fuzzy when you realize what great people you got to work with chorus thank you for the hundred bits doug are you going to do a transformers rise of the beast review it's much better than bayformers it's a bit like huh. transformers cybertron a saturday's cartoon in a good way simply a uh, simple plot great well done and camera shot fights likable characters both human and robot i'm eager to see more of them uh i'll probably stream it when it comes out um that's another one where i'm like i think that's one of the reasons a lot of films are not doing that great and the ones that are are doing something a little different i think people are just kind of getting sick of some of the formula even the movies that do bring back like whatever reboot quill whatever they're called you know like Small years and years apart and stuff like that they have day. to do something really different like you know uh, no way home or something like that um so yeah i'll i hear it's okay i'll probably wait and see it when uh uh, when it comes to streaming, and then maybe I'll do like a vlog of it, unless it's something I feel like I can really do a nostalgia critic on. Spaced Coyote, thank you for the 100 mm. bits. Hey, Doug, what are your thoughts on the 2011 Tintin movie by Steven Spielberg and any chance for an NC review of it? You know, I have not seen it, and I am told I really should. Like, it's really freaking good, and that's so funny because it just looked like nothing to me. But so many people have said it's actually really, really good. So I'm actually going to write that down so I don't forget because you were not the first one to tell me I should really check that movie out. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the villain Bellos in the Owl House <coughs> overall now that you've seen everything? Hate him. <laughs> He's the worst part of the show. I'm sorry. I've realized everything I do not like about the show connects back to him especially when we saw I, I, that uh collector character was 10 times more interesting i thought that was a greater threat that was a more complicated interesting villain and the backstory was interesting it was kind of new it was kind of combining a bunch of elements i've seen before to make something really awesome and just whenever bellows comes in it's like okay we're doing this thing you've seen a million times with nothing new added to it and i just i no, he never grew on me. He only got worse and worse. Except for the design. The grotesqueness was mighty impressive. Day. I did like that. But uh, yeah, that's the... Honestly, I really like the show. That's just the one thing I absolutely did not like. And sadly, it's in the show a lot. Dillbaum, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite Spider-Man movie after both Spider-Verses and No Way Home? Oh, uh... Man, uh... Shit, is it really? Uh, I, don't, I, I guess it's a it's a toss up between Spider Man Two and uh, Amazing Spider Man. Um, Spider Man Two's like a better sequel, and and it's probably more impressive and stuff. But I just I do like Garfield a lot more as Spider Man, and that's a little bit more when I thought of like a Spider Man movie. That's more what I thought it would be like. So. I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying it's a little bit more of a personal preference. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a toss up between those two. Small Movie World, thank you for the 1,225 bits. Thank you. Uh, speaking of the kids WB bloopers, I loved the Jimmy Stewart bit. You you do such a funny impression. That bit in the click review killed me. Merry Christmas, you beautiful McDonald's, you. <laughs> oh, well, 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 thank you. Uh, it means a great deal for me. Thank you. God bless. No, I'm throwing Nicholas Cage there. It's funny, you start out doing Jimmy Stewart, and then you just kind of make him sound a little bit more tired, and you get Nicholas Cage <laughs> a little bit. So, kind of like Jimmy Stewart, the mouthful of marbles a little bit. Perfect. <laughs> Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. Sup, Doug and Heather. Doug, have you finished Owl House yet? And if you have, what do you think of it? I did, and I really liked it. I, I was saying before, the one thing I really didn't like, Bellows never grew on me. 
and everything connected to him. I really didn't like. I wish it was about the collector. I wish he was the villain. Um, but everything else worked pretty well. Um, the finale is very like what you would expect in a finale like this. You know, there's not many surprises or anything. But you know, I I like the characters. I like the I like the story when it's not around Bellows. You know, so um, yeah, I I really enjoyed it. If he wasn't in there, it probably would be my favorite of these kind. I just call them cartoon epics because mm. like they're not really animated series like you know they're supposed to look kind of real like they're cartoons they're exaggerated they're goofy looking but they're telling epic stories so um yeah you know like gravity falls and steven i shouldn't say that steven universe is always going to be the best but uh it might have been my personal favorite if it just wasn't for that character he, he just dragged everything down to me and I, I think i'm gonna be an outlier on that but yeah that, that's the only thing <laughs> Dillbomb, thank you for the 100 bits. What is a movie where you prefer the extended edition to the theatrical? Oh, Fellowship, big time. Um, I had a big issue with Fellowship's editing uh, the first time around. I thought the opening for whatever, almost a three-hour movie, however long it was, uh, the opening was way too rushed. You couldn't get an idea of those characters, in my opinion. It kept jumping away from one shot to another, so you couldn't feel like you could really be in this world. That's why I really like the first Hobbit a lot. I kind of felt like that was the fellowship I didn't get. Uh, but the extended cut is better. But that's the only better extended cut. All the other ones, it's like, no, watch watch the original first and then watch the extended. But for fellowship, I would actually say maybe check out the extended one first. Jay Pith, thank you for the 100 bits. Rank the Kingdom Hearts series from best to worst based on the ones that you've played so far. I mean, I've only... Oh, no, no, that's right. I played... Uh... Uh, oh, I'm, yeah, break my sleep. Um, every day. Maybe, uh, probably two. Uh, then, then birth by sleep. Then three. Then one. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you played Super Mario 3D World? I ask because you said you want Peach playable, but not using a frying pan, emotion slapping, or behind as, or her behind as attacks, and you didn't want it to be a dream. Well, that's your answer. Uh, did I play this one? Let me see. It's like... I did, and it, I really is, enjoyed it. Is this a side-scrolling one or not? No, it isn't. Uh... I haven't played this one. It did look like fun. This is one where he's a kitty cat. That's right. Uh, no, I haven't played it, and I really should. Actually, it does it's look really like a lot good. Of fun. Well, and then they're re-releasing. Uh, what well, RPG is that? The... Yeah, they yeah, announced which... it today. Super Mario RPG remake. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, which, <laughs> maybe I should play that too, because like I've never played that game. I just sort of assumed it was nothing, and then everyone's like, "No, it's like one of the best Mario games ever." I'm like, "Really?" So I'm just really curious to see uh how that turns out so um yeah maybe i'll play that too it's two mario games i gotta get on track with adam grunther thank you for the 100 bits overall how would you rank the three justice league members standalone movies those being man of steel aquaman wonder woman and the flash from best to worst a oh, wonder woman hands down best um probably aquaman next uh the flash and then man of steel i just wasn't a fan of that one <laughs> Small Movie World, thank you for the 1,225 bits. Is there a pair of movies thank you me. ever always get mixed up? It's funny you just reviewed Baby's Day Out because I keep forgetting that It and Three Men and a Baby are two totally different separate films. They've always been one and the same in my head for some reason. Man, I'm sure I have, and I can't. I do it a lot with titles, uh, and I think that might be uh, commentary on just generic titles, honestly. Um the one we always talk about is that there's this, it's a good movie too, where the preview, it's like this guy named Gordo. It's like, I remember this kid named Gordo. And years later, he's back. It's like, what's your name? My name is Gordo. It's like, remember that kid you grew up with? Gordo? Gordo's, that, Gordo's following. It's got, they say Gordo like a million times in the trailer. So you think it's going to be called that. And then it's like, The Gift. It's like the most generic, forgettable title ever. Uh, so yeah, sometimes it happens with um, uh, the titles of movies, but uh, ironically, I remember that one just because it so did not match the movie. Uh, it should have been called Gordo, come on. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug, I have another show to recommend for a future, future Disney Semper. It's called Wander Over Yonder and was created mm. by the creator of the Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, I've uh, 
I've never seen it. I don't know anything about it either, which is nice. It'd be nice to go into that like totally blind. Uh, so I might. I think the next one I'll do because a lot of people have asked for it. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man. A lot of people ask me to uh, review that one, so I'll probably be the next show I check out. I hear it's only one season too, so that should be pretty easy. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. There's also Super Mario Bros. Wonder and a new Peach game coming. Hope that puts her lower in your dumb butts in dumb butts in distress list, as that was another reason I started to think you preferred masculine women, a.k.a. Never mind, I'm just not going to finish that. <laughs> uh, well, I do like dumb butts in distress because she does use her butt to fight. Um, I don't know. It's rough because you got, like, the archetype, don't you? I mean, like, I, I thought the workaround, like, with the Mario movie it was pretty good. Like, they need a romance. She's showing him around. But, like, it's still his movie, too. He ultimately still has to kind of, like, you know, at the very end, be warranting of the title, you know. But she, she would know the place more than he would. So, you know, like, I, I thought that was a good compromise. Uh, for that. I don't know, like, something about the crying in the game as a weapon just seems so weird to me. Small Movie World, thank you for the 666 bits. Thank Your you. personal favorite non-NC show slash project that you've ever done. My top three in no specific order are probably Real Thoughts, First Viewing, and of course, Disney December. Uh, man, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Uh, I mean, I, it cha you know, it changes. It really does. Uh, like right now, I would kind of say, yeah, the first viewings. I like watching those. I like going back to those. But in terms of like, man, the best comedic timing I've done in something or most experimental, it's like, well, that's not in first viewing, but it's just what I really like to watch right now. So, um, yeah, I, I guess that for the moment. Um, yeah, I don't know. And maybe the pandemic had something to do with that, where it's like, man, I just miss this genuine interaction with people. Maybe that's why I like watching the bloopers uh, as well. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's been done for a while, but I don't know. You, you treasure those interactions more. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Who was your favorite Indiana Jones villain? Uh, i trying to think what one I quote the most. Uh, probably Donovan. He was pretty good. Um, even though he's kind of just a spinoff of uh, Belloc from uh, the first film. But uh, I don't know. He, he, he was just so classy. Now they're both so classy. I don't know. Yeah, just him for whatever reason. <laughs> Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. <clears throat> Doug, now that you've finished The Small Owl Three. House, what are your thoughts Every on the day. show as a whole? Plus, did you think the last three episodes did a good job of cramming the rest of the story in? Yeah, the... Uh, the only thing aside from the Bello stuff is that you can tell like some of the arcs with the characters, like they were, you could tell they wanted to work on them over a season, but they had to just squeeze it in this last couple of chunks. So like every character randomly has a moment where their insecurities get to them and somebody else has to say how awesome they are, you know, kind of constantly. And it's like, okay, there's like 20 cry moments in here. You know, it's that's wearing thin a little bit, but, uh, but still it is the final thing they're all going to do. And so they should work off each other. There should be a lot of like interactions and character moments. Um, Yeah. I liked it. I really like the show a great deal. I definitely have it as these, it kind of cartoon epics go, especially for the Disney ones. I say it's like just under Gravity Falls uh, for me and uh, probably just under, um, yeah, like Gravity Falls, Steven Universe and uh, Adventure Time. Small Movie World, thank you for the 666 bits. Last you. week, you two talked about bad movie theater experience he, experiences. Here's one of mine that actually enhanced it. I took my mom to see Cats because, bless her naive soul, she wanted to see it. A group of teenage boys sat towards the front, actually quiet throughout all things considered. But then, out of nowhere, one of them cut a loud fart. Usually that annoy me, but it was a much-needed sobering break from the madness of that movie. I, that's kind of like uh, <clears throat> when we saw Greatest Showman, we went in this movie theater that was completely empty. I think we were at a con and we're like, eh, I think we got to review this or something. Let's just all go together. And just immediately we knew this was trash, but the most entertaining trash alive. And we just had a ball laughing at it and shouting comments at the theater. I mean, it was like, because we were the only ones there, we were just like, yeah, we can do and say whatever we want. Who cares? Who gives a shit? And it, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Tamara came out of came out of lurking in chat to say greatest show it was so incredible we had a blast <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it totally was yeah I mean just remember how loud we were laughing uh yeah it was just so funny <laughs> just him riding the elephant at the end it's like well where do you park that where's the elephant go what what happens after this 
Dill Bomb, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, I've heard you say multiple times on stream that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood might be your favorite Tarantino flick. Out of curiosity, what makes it so great to you personally? P.S. I love it as well. Uh, there's something about... Because I don't know. I, I think especially when you're in kind of creative field, but it takes a while to make something. It's how often you go in and out of story mode, of movie mode, of acting mode, and all of that. Like, you're actually in the movie seeing how it works. And then it's interrupted by a problem or something like that. You got, okay, we got to fix that, fix that. Okay, you got that. Okay, do the scene again. You got to get back in the mode. Like, it was, like, just one continuous story. And the film did that when they were actually shooting the Western. And that was so fascinating. I thought in a weird way the whole movie was almost doing that, kind of balancing that movie fantasy and real life. And in the end, it was kind of like the movie fantasy kind of won to a point where it kind of rewrote history. And it's, you know, but reality, then you go back to reality, you know what really happened. But that kind of reminds you, yeah, it's the magic of movies. You can do that in a movie. You can have a nice, crazy ass ending like that. And it's, I don't know, in a weird way, it just sort of reminds you of how, um, how great the art form really can be. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, Tunes and Dark Tunes indicates you don't accept live action, but could you make an exception for Sesame Street? You probably think I'm thinking of the Hooper episode, but I'm actually thinking about the infamous Wicked Witch episode, which disturbed so many and caused so much backlash when it aired that it was hidden for over four decades. Only last year did the entire episode appear on YouTube and is still viewable to this day. Uh... I'm going to sound awful. I didn't even know of this episode. Oh, really? Uh, this is the Wicked Witch. Yeah, rare. Wicked Witch. Is... Huh. And, and that's what's her name. We played the Wicked Witch, right? Yeah. Yeah. She just okay. scared. It Literally, when it aired, it scared so many kids, and they got so many complaints that they hit it. All right. I'm at least going to check that out, because I didn't know that. You know me. I love anything that scares little kids. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to check that out. I was scared of the Wicked Witch when I was a little kid, too, so I, I think that'll be fun. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Are there any villains that you love that you wish were in better movies? For me, it's Thrax from Osmosis Jones. The character was genuinely cool and intimidating and had a great performance by Lawrence Fishburne. All it took was a whiny and disgusting Bill Murray to ruin him. Man, I I'm sure there... I, I mean, again, I feel like I gotta go to, like, you know, some of the Batman movies and Spider-Man movies and stuff like that, where it's like, ah, there were... So, you know, just the scene of, like, the Sandman coming to life in Spider-Man 3, I still think it's, like, an amazing moment. I mean, just with no dialogue, it's all effects, it's all visual storytelling and music and everything. Um, and so much of that character, I think, would have worked if they just gave him an ending. It doesn't really end. <laughs> it's like, what's, what happens to him after all that? It's like, th th there's no real conclusion there. Uh so, yeah, maybe that sort of told in a better uh, story. And uh, pretty much all the amazing Spider-Man uh, villains, like the Lizard and Electro and stuff like that. Like, I feel like all of them could have been done a lot better. <laughs> That Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. So I saw Elemental a couple of hours ago. It, sorry, hours ago. It was better than I expected. Not one of their best movies, but I don't think it was trying to. The story felt personal because the director, Peter Sohn, it was. The romance was pretty formulaic, but overall, it's a solid three out of five stars for me. And that's what I hear. I don't hear anyone say it's awful. It is just so mid and so safe and so predictable. And it's so funny because for so long I would always be like, you know, well, the movie's just okay. I'm going to say it's okay. It's not like, you know, I remember when we got just bad movie after bad movie and that, you know, really sucked. But like, I do feel like that's kind of an issue now with films. There is just kind of this mid-level that's just getting frustrating now. So that when a film does come along and do something risky in one way or another or really different or experimental in one way or another we do value it you know again like top gun across the spider verse and stuff like that so <clears throat> excuse me uh yeah i i believe you and that's all i've heard i've heard it's very mid it's fine but we expect more from pixar than just mid and fine you know so um yeah i'll, I'll check it out at some point but i'm probably just gonna do a disney December on it i don't think anyone's like demanding to know what i think about it right now Still bomb. Thank you for the hundred bits. Even though the time has already passed, do you think there was ever potential for a good Jurassic Park sequel? And if so, what would you have wanted it to be? Uh, I mean, just 
what they kept promising, honestly, just dinosaurs loose in the city, in the world, in, you know, everyday civilization and stuff like that. And the closest, the closest we got was Lost World. That was movie two, where they did at the end. And then it's like, for whatever reason, they're always like, oh, the next one we're going to do it. And they never do it. Uh, the, the closest thing to something like kind of new and neat was them opening the park. Like, that was cool. I think we all want to see what would it be like if that park actually opened and things went wrong. So that was a good next step. But then after that, they got, they got to get out in the world. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what you would do with it now. Because, again, it just feels like it's really passe and old. But they they still make a bajillion dollars. So I don't know. I, I guess somebody likes them. <laughs> Wiccan, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen Spectacular Spider-Man? It is by far the best Spider-Man show ever made, and it actually lets the villains be real people. Would love to know your thoughts. Uh, no, but it is literally up next. Uh, I'll probably start watching it tomorrow, honestly. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you ever seen the sitcom News Radio? It stars people like Phil Hartman and is genuinely one of the most underrated sitcoms of the 90s. I've only seen a little bit of it, and I, I remember laughing at it, but I don't remember uh, loving it. Um, I should probably give it a chance and watch the whole thing, because I do kind of like that era of sick, you know, like the Frasier and Seinfeld era and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I should probably give it a shot. I, I might put that out again. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. Oh, Doug, have I got a dark tune for you. It's from the same country as Watership Down. It aired on Children's BBC, but it had some of the most shocking deaths children had seen at the time. Near the in nearly the entire series could be reviewed on dark tunes. It's called Animals of Farthing Wood. I've heard of it. I have not had time to sit down and watch it. Um... I'll be honest, too. I, I brought Dark Toons back for a little bit because I was kind of, you know, missing it. And now I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, maybe late, like I'm kind of burned out on it again. So uh, whenever I do bring it back, I'll definitely have that uh, as one of the ones on there. Okay, it is on the list. I do have it on there. I've definitely seen some of the imagery, uh, which you're right, is quite horrifying. Uh, even for adults, <laughs> it's quite disturbing. Um, so I, I should, I'm curious to check that one out. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, at some point, could you make a video combining all the Pirates movie reviews together like you did with X-Men, Matrix, and so on? Oh, yeah. Um, why haven't I done that yet? Yeah, I'll just write that down, actually. <laughs> I, I have a list of ones, like, you know, little uh, combos to put together and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did all the Pirates. I could just do that. So, yeah, uh, thanks for the reminder. Small Movie World, thank you for the 666 bits. I was listening to you a do. podcast about The Last Crusade a couple of hours ago and learned that Gregory Peck was a backup choice for Indy's dad had Connery not signed on. As a mm. Peck fan, do you think that could have worked? Oh, yeah. Oh, he, has he ever turned in a bad performance? Um, Sean Connery it was phenomenal, though. I mean, I'm not going to ban out that at all. Uh yeah, man, I'm just really envisioning that. I could really see that working. I think the only reason Connery might work better is because Spielberg always said he wanted Indiana Jones to kind of be like his James Bond. I mean, obviously, it's a send up to a ton of other, uh, you know, adventure films from like the 50s and stuff like that. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I think he always said he kind of wanted like his spin, his version of James Bond. So it makes sense to actually have James Bond in it. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. Have I have yet another show to recommend for a future Disney December. It's called Kick Batowski, Suburban Daredevil. The <laughs> show had Evil Knievel's son overseeing the stunt work in the show. I'm not sure it'll autocorrect. Kick Batowski. There you go. Oh, Kick Batowski. Gotcha. Um, oh, okay. Kick. Did I say something different? Oh, I... no, no, no. You, you, okay. you probably said it right. I think I just heard it wrong. Um, okay. I feel like I've seen this advertised on Disney Plus or something like that. Uh, yeah. Looks like a cute show. Well, I'll see if I can uh, get around to it. Jpith, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the movie Groundhog Day? I only ask because, to my knowledge, you've never actually talked about it before. I guess not. Um... <laughs> I love it as much as anyone else does, honestly. It's one of those where it's really funny, it's really touching, it's really clever. There's a lot of, like, you know, I feel like philosophy you could read into it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't think I could add a ton to it. It's one of the reasons I don't talk about it. I just like it for the exact same reasons everybody likes it. I don't think I can add anything that new to it. I got Chaplin coming in here. You want to come up here, buddy? Chaplin! Come on, buddy. 
Come on, Chaplin. There he we is. We need a Chaplin appearance. There he is. Do, <gasps> there he do is. the little thing. Do the thing. You can lick my nose. Do mm. your emote thing, please, Chaplin. Yeah, the emote thing. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you ever seen the show MASH? And if so, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, it, it's very good. It's a good show. I don't really get into it, if that makes sense. Um, I, I appreciate what it does. I've seen the movie. It's a very good movie. Um I don't know why it never quite grabbed me like it grabbed so many other people, but I mean, it, it is good. It, it's a decent show. Just, um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't stay with me like other shows do, but I understand why it stays with others. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the hundred bits. Have you seen the Sinister movies? And if so, what are your thoughts? Let me, did I see? No, I'm thinking of Insidious. I saw the first movie, I think. Let me see. Sinister movie. Okay, you know, we are just talking about getting movies confused. And uh, yeah, I got uh, Sinister and Insidious. Oh, maybe I haven't. Okay. Uh, wait, have I seen this? Oh, oh my God. I have no idea if I've seen this. Like, I feel like I remember being advertised. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have. Um, I will try to check it out. Oi, Ram, thank you for the 100 bits. That Ruby Gillen movie seems like something you'd review. I bring it up because Jane Fonda is in the movie. If you review it, will we get any Hanoi Jane jokes? If you don't know what Hanoi Jane refers to, look it up. Um, I think I will. Hanoi Jane? Yeah, Hanoi. Hanoi Jane. I do not know what this is. Uh, I, oh, like when she was in war? Side? I, I'll look this up later. Um, I, I should, cause I'm sure a lot of people are gonna want to know what I think of it. it. It comes out the same weekend as Indiana Jones, and it's funny cause I get a feeling that film's not gonna do well either. But it's like I should review it. I should talk about. it. I feel like people are gonna want to know what I think of it. Um, I have no interest in seeing that movie, but for some reason people are really excited to see it, so I probably will uh, check it out, but probably after Indiana Jones. Small Movie World, thank you for the 666 bits. For both of you, your go-to food slash treats in hot weather. Oreo milkshakes for me all the way. Many have <laughs> been had recently due to a fortnight-long heat wave here in Scotland. Uh, oh, that sucks. Um, Man, like, like when it's a real hot day, like that kind of thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Man, uh... I don't know if this is weird, but my mom used to always freeze fruits. So we had frozen grapes and frozen blueberries and frozen bananas. So then it wasn't a lot of money for her to, like, get ice cream for us all. It was just like, here's a whole bunch of frozen grapes, and they're so good. <laughs> I someone love frozen just, grapes. And it sounds like such an old person thing, but someone did introduce me to frozen blueberries, and you're right, they're really good. They're delicious! <laughs> it's really bizarre. So are frozen um, grapes, and so are frozen bananas, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, okay, um... But yeah, man, in terms of, uh, I'm trying to think, I guess when I was a kid, I remember those, um, what, those, those little packs that have like just a little Kool-Aid juice in it or whatever. I mean, where you just, you put it in the freezer, you take it out and they just like square the little squirt drinks and stuff like that. Yeah. All those things are because they're pretty much water, but they have like a little bit of sugar in it, like just enough to kind of balance it out. Um, also just a good, like, IPA on a, a hot day is really, really good. I love like when you go for a bike ride and they have like, there's like a bar or someplace on the way back. It's just like, you know, all right, yeah, I need a breathe. You just go and like have the good IPA like in the sun and everything. It's just like, ah, it just tastes so good. Abnormal Gamer, thank you for the 100 bits. I'm back. Good afternoon, Doug and Heather. I watched Rise of the Beast this past week and have you guys seen it? I think you might enjoy it a little. No, I haven't. I'll probably stream it when it comes out. I do hear it's more kind of like what you're looking for in like a Transformer movie. Um, so I'll check it out when it comes to streaming. Deal Bomb, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, Doug, I heard recently on stream that you would be interested in reviewing the Lord of the Rings movies, even though it may be tricky. If you do decide to review them, would you do a full NC treatment for each film or a compilation slash editorial style review? Either way, would love to hear you talk about them. I feel like I'd have to do like one for each movie. I'd have to just do a, a full review um, of each film. Uh, yeah, and I don't know how I would go about it. I'm not saying I won't, because uh, it is one of those where you kind of feel like, man, hasn't everything been said about these films? I'm like, well, not necessarily. You know, I feel like every time I watch somebody review it, I'm like, 
Well, I could say that. I could bring this up. I could mention this. So um, maybe at some point, but I don't know when. I don't know uh, when's the right time to do it, you know, because, yeah, man, it's going to be an undertaking. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, that was my computer, not yours, everyone. It made the Windows noise. That was my computer, not yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Deal bomb, thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> hey, Doug, I heard recently... Oh, I just read that. I'm sorry, I got distracted by the Windows noise. Um, Strider for Life, thank you for the 100 bits. I just saw The Flash, and I gotta say, Michael Keaton carried that movie. Remember, no spoilers. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought he was good. I um, Again, I like him more when he was out of the mask uh, and, and yeah. he was Bruce Wayne. I, I like that a lot more. Even when he's walking around with just the Batman outfit and no mask, I thought looked cooler than when he actually put the mask on. But um, no, I, I thought he did a real good job. I I don't know. He He's just a very easy actor to like. And I thought he, he I think even he said, you know, like Batman was easy to get down. Bruce Wayne, that was the one I really had to get in his head and figure it out and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know. It shows because I feel like that's kind of like the thing looking back years later now. It's like, yeah, that's why like Batman's awesome, but he works because his Bruce Wayne is so good. Adam Grunther, thank you for the hundred bits. What is your favorite kind of movie monster? For example, zombies, vampires, werewolves, aliens, etc. cetera. Uh, the ones that probably scare me the most, like are most likely to get scared on me are probably ghosts because they have no rules. It's just, and they can look, like anything you can play around with you know if they, it looks like one thing one second it can look completely different the next because it's a ghost you can do whatever you want uh but the ones i think are the coolest that i'm just like oh man like those things are fucking awesome is uh werewolves i think werewolves are just so freaking cool <laughs> um but uh yeah so i i guess take that for what's worth <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sorry for the clarification. I wasn't saying that my, saying Michael Keaton is in the movie was a spoiler. I'm well aware that he was in all the trailers and things like that. I, that wasn't the implication. The just implication remember. was just in yes. the answer. Please remember that there's no spoilers in chat. If you are answering along, please remember there's no spoilers. <laughs> Small Movie World, thank you for the 420 bits. Doug, you've mentioned it a few times your grandfather lived with you back in the day. What was your favorite memory of him from that period? Uh Man, I think favorite memory. So he was definitely a dude that like lived through the depression era. Uh, so he was a real, he was a real cheapskate. And he passed that on to me. I think I'm a cheapskate too, honestly. Uh, you know, I, I'm like always really conservative about spending money and stuff like that. But uh, well, not always, but what little I am, <laughs> I feel like comes from him. And uh, it's something he would do every once in a while because he was very like, you know, kind of OCD about the place and keeping it clean and stuff. And uh, you know, anything, if anything was like even turned a little to the left, he would like, you know, like sort of bowl us out for it. But then like he would get us donuts and give it to us like when we were kids. And he always say, see, I'm not such a bad guy, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And like, I always thought it was interesting that like when we were kids, he's like, oh, this you know, kind of curmudgeon. This guy's obsessing over the house and stuff. But then anytime we went somewhere, people would always like give him a hug and be like, this man, this is a great man. Oh my God. And I'm just like, shit. Okay. What am I missing? As I got older, I saw it more, you know, when you listen to like more of what he says and his stories and stuff like that. So uh, just the way your perception kind of changes. That, that, that's kind of in a weird way. That's kind of my favorite memory overall. Fat Disney Nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Did you have time to see Extraction 2? If you have, what if you have, what are your thoughts on it, as well as the first one, if you've seen that one as well? I don't think I've seen either of them. Let me see what even... Oh, this Chris Hemsworth uh, movie. Uh, no, I haven't even seen the uh, first one, so uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Haunted Joker, thank you for the 100 bits. Interesting question. What is a question you're surprised that no one has asked you more often? And what is the answer? Uh... Where's the hair? And uh, it's gone. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, no, honestly, it, that is a good question. I can't think of the answer. Uh, yeah, right. I, I really don't know. <laughs> Maybe just I always say, I remember, so you don't have to. And then what don't you remember? And it's like, I don't remember. <laughs> Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I was almost sure you were going to review The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Since that's another <laughs> movie, I've seen some people joking about you reviewing it. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that one started. I haven't, like, actually, like, I don't even know what they are. If they're, like, you know, like, edits of me reviewing it or just, like, written reviews or just pictures or whatever. 
<laughs> Every time I see it, it does make me laugh. I saw another one uh, somebody sent to me. This is obviously a troll site, but it's very funny. Uh, pretty much said something like, uh, Nostalgia Critic releases review of Schindler's List, removes it five minutes after posting. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought that was pretty because that's obviously something we would never post. But uh, yeah, I think it's kind of the same thing, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which I have never seen. Uh, I guess I probably should. I hear it's a good movie. Haunted Joker, thank you for the 100 bits. Where did you get the Bugs Bunny Red Riding Hood shirt you wore last week? Uh, somewhere online. Anytime there's a shirt. I mean, this one I got in like whatever, Amazon or whatever, or maybe Spencer's, one of those. But uh, anytime there's, like, a shirt that looks really weird or where the hell did you get that, it's always some, like, off-brand just site that just makes, you know, like, random shit. Like, they're, like, probably not licensed, you know, kind of thing. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, – I, I love that shirt. I don't know. At one point, I think, again, it was during the pandemic, I just got – obsessed with finding shirts i'm just like you know what i'm stuck in here i want some I, I want some funny shirts give me some funny shirts so i just typed in anything that i liked and put shirt after and i, I just saw that cartoon i'm like i see little Ryan Hood, bugs bunny shirt and that came up i'm like oh hell yeah <laughs> small movie world thank you for the 420 bits for both of you Ooh. favorite board games i'm a scrabble guy myself ah uh Hmm. Well, I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> I'm a big board game person. My favorite game of all time is King of Tokyo. Um, I am also a huge fan of Machikoro. Um, but King of Tokyo, Machikoro, maybe Takenoko are some of my top three. Candyland. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, probably it's a, the one I play the most is uh, Othello. I even got like an app where I was playing like a bunch of people at the same time. <laughs> So there's one guy, you know, you put these little playful names or I just put like old Baldy is my name because I don't want people to know it's me necessarily. But, you know, it's not the biggest giveaway. But one was called like Angry Video Game Bowler. And I'm just like, I'm so tempted to tell him he's fighting the nostalgia critic right now, <laughs> but I didn't do it. <laughs> but I played him a lot. He was very, very good. Um, but yeah, I finally got out of that. But uh, the other one is uh, Stratego. I love Stratego. I haven't played that one. In a long time. But yeah, those are probably my favorite uh, board games. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you seen The Exorcism of Emily Rose 2005? And if so, what are your thoughts? Nah, never saw it. It didn't look like a movie I'd get into. It just looked like another kind of conveyor belt horror movie. Um, if you've seen it, is it ain't good? Uh, Adam Grunther, I haven't, because I don't watch horror movies, though. So. Um, mm. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Since Secret Invasion came out, what would you say is your overall favorite Samuel L. Jackson performance? Man. I gotta really think. I mean, god damn, I really don't know. Uh, I try to think of the ones that just left, like, really left an impact on me like a big i mean obviously pulp fiction would be up there uh, a lot of the tarantino ones the more i think about it i do really like him in uh was it the hateful eight uh mm -hmm. I, I really like him in that <laughs> it, it, it's not a spoiler but the way he just says was it something like of course not like anyone that knows the scene knows the line and I just thought the way he said that was so funny. He just crushed a guy's like fantasy that this fantasy that was constructing just this really like, what the hell's wrong with you sentence. And that just, that really killed me. Rancy gaming. Thank you for the hundred bits. So Doug, remember last week I mentioned that the Disney movie Valiant was based on a true story of carrier pigeons and you didn't believe it was true. Well, it is true. Please look up the Wikipedia page war pigeon. Oh, I, I have no doubt it is based on a true story, but it's probably based on a true story about as much as Cocaine Bear is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they just sort of put the name there. And it's good, because then it forces you to go and look up the actual history yourself. But I'm just going to take a wild guess and say a lot of it is fiction. Like, there are talking birds in the movie, I believe. <laughs> I'm just going to assume they took some liberties. <laughs> Jpith, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, you're a beer guy. I have two recommendations for you then. My top two favorite beers on the market, Sour Monkey and Golden Monkey by Victory. Uh, I'm not a big sour beer guy. Uh, so that one, I think, would be wasted on me. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, Golden Monkey. Oh, no, actually, the first thing that pops up is the brewery. Awesome. I, I was like, Golden Monkey, well, a lot of things are going to pop up with that. I'm like, I've oh, had no, Golden Monkey before. Uh, it's pretty good. Well, what kind of beer uh, is it? Isn't it just a lager? It, I could be wrong. Here it is. Uh, 
Belgian style triple ale. Oh, a triple. There uh, we go. That's another one I don't know if I would like. I like it more than a sour, but um, it's not usually my thing, but uh, I, I might give it a shot. Thank that, you so much. That Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. Baby's day out, bitch. <laughs> People are so mean. <laughs> Small Movie World, thank you for the 420 bits. I rewatched the first three Jurassic Park films recently for my podcast, and watching the third one again, I feel like it would have both way more interesting if it was entirely focused on the boy who's blown onto the island, and it's just about him surviving on his own, trying to make it to the coast. Yeah, actually, um, that'd be kind of interesting. I feel like they kind of did that in, uh, not Predator, what the fuck's it called? Um, Prey. I feel like they kind of did that. I, I like movies like that, where it just kind of focuses on one person versus something supernatural. I mean, you know, dinosaurs aren't really supernatural, but them coming back are. Uh, and uh, yeah, I feel like they kind of did that at the end of Alien versus Predator, and uh, they, they did it with a good chunk of Prey. And uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. I think that'd be a cool idea. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I was wondering if you've seen the gameplay trailer for Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. It looks like a lot of fun and could be a potential game to play for disney December, which is perfect since it does release December of this year. Oh, interesting. I doubt I'd be able to play it in time uh, to do a disney December of it to play, like, the whole game. But, um, uh, no, I haven't. And uh, I'll wait and see. I, you know... I why, why would I wait? I'll, I'll check it out. I'm not going to watch it now, but I'll just put in the thing so I don't <laughs> forget. Uh, yeah, I'll check it out. Griffiths, thank you for the 100 bits. A new Metalocalypse, Metalocalypse movie was revealed today, and I have a recommend... Uh, sorry, and I have to recommend you watch Metal Metalocalypse. Jesus Christ, Heather. If you <laughs> haven't in the past, especially since the creator of home movies made the show, might be my favorite adult cartoon ever. I gotta give it another chance. I tried like twice to get into it because I do know, yeah, it was Brenda Small that made that show, and I love home movies, and you know, and I like metal music too and stuff. And I tried twice and I could not get into it, and I don't know what it is. So maybe, maybe now I will because my tastes do change over time. Maybe I'll just try it now and be like, what the hell was I thinking? This is great because I've heard so many people say it's wonderful. Small Movie World, thank you for the 420 bits. Your favorite Tom and Jerry cartoon? Mine is Trap Happy. Coincidentally, the first I ever saw that spot where Tom gets hammered in the foot and then the wall drops on Butch's finger, then he gets hammered, then ten, that 10 seconds has me in tears every time because of their brilliant screams. Uh, man. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find the title. Okay, well, there it is. There's the image. It's not going to say what's from, though, is it? No, okay, so there's one where it's just, the whole thing, it, it sounds just so generic, but it's just Tom trying to set up traps to catch Jerry. There's a couple clips that make it on, is it just Mouse Trouble? Is that it? Let me see. That's such a generic title. I think that's it. Let me look at some, that's the one. Yeah, Mouse Trouble, that's the one. That just has some of the best slapstick, some of the best timing, some of the best Tom screams, uh... I can't even replicate them because I know it'll just crack and break all your headphones and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's it's so funny. I like Rob and I sometimes will still put it on just like cry laughing. It's just so funny. Noah Zinner, thank you for the hundred bits. Doug, there are a couple of commercials that are pretty nostalgic to me that could be worth mentioning for your next review. Zoo Pals and Fushigi. Just an idea. Zoo pals. Let Aren't those the paper plates that look like animals? Uh, yes, they are. And Great. I guess there's a commercial for them. Um, I will try to look that up later. Thank you so much. Jpit, thank you for the 100 bits. Just watched McCabe and Mrs. Miller for the first mm. time the other night. And Robert Altman's stuff really does stick with you. What's your favorite of his? Man... That's a, so it's funny. I can, sometimes I confuse Robert Altman with uh, Mike Nichols. I, I get uh, their movies uh, Altman uh, mixed up sometimes. Uh, let, let me look at a list of his movies. Um, I did it, no Casper Park wasn't his last one, uh, but it was one of his last one. I, I did like that. I don't know if I'd say that's my favorite of his. Though. Did he do the player? I think he did the player. Uh, okay, here's some movies. Uh, ba 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 Oh, that's right. He did do Mash. That's right. I do really like Mash. Um, I do have a soft spot for Popeye. I'm not going to lie. Um, and there's the player. Yeah, probably the player. That That's probably my favorite one. 
Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Now that you finished Owl House, I have two questions. What was your favorite episode and what show will you be watching next? Uh, oh, Spectacular Spider-Man is the next one. And uh, favorite episode, let me see. Um, well, it's rough because then I'm like, well, do I go for a funny one or do I go for like an emotional one uh, or one that's kind of both? Um, you know, I think I like... Uh, Man, I like the one where Hootie's trying to solve problems for everybody because it tricked me. It made me think it was just going to be a filler episode, just of a day in the life of Hootie. Yeah, who cares? You can skip this one. And like all this important information is dropped in there. I thought that was so clever. It was done in a funny way as well. So uh, I guess for the moment, I'll say that one. Small Movie World, thank you for the 420 bits. I've been rewatching bits and pieces of Puss in Boots The Last Wish, and damn, I know it goes without saying, but death is genuinely intimidating. I remember on my first watch, his whistle filled me with dread, and when he suddenly appears in the Cave of Lost Souls, that genuinely made me jump. I love, uh, yeah, when he's getting out of the cave and just like his uh, image just fills like all the crystals and glass and ice and stuff like that and the rocks, and it's just like almost like consuming him. It's just, oh, it's... It's so good. It's such a good movie. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, can we get a clue for next week's NC review, please? Uh, let me see. <laughs> what was that? It was... <laughs> Interesting. I know, guys. Thank you for the 38-month subscription. Welcome back. Appreciate that. Thank you. Did you see the latest Nintendo Direct? Now, I don't know what to get on October 20th. Super Mario Bros. Wonder or Spider-Man 2? Guess I'll get both. Oh, are they both coming out the same day? That's they sure are. <laughs> oh, wow, man. Well, we saw how well that worked for uh, the Flash and Elemental. Um, I guess... Uh, so is Nintendo Direct like the next system? Or is it just like... No. A it's, bunch of games. Or, it's or what, the what is name it? they give for their presentations. Okay, okay. That's, so I thought, like, when it was released, it was Nintendo Direct. Okay. Because every time I see them, I'm like, oh, is this a new system? No, it says this is for the Switch. So, okay, that helps. Thank you. That is totally a boomer moment. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I did see the one for uh, Wonder. That uh, definitely looked like fun. Yeah, the few that I saw, I saw, like, maybe two or three trailers. And, uh, yeah, they all look good. Japa, thank you for the 100 bits. Sam Raimi has been in talks to remake a movie called 1978 called Magic. Um, ever seen this movie? If not, it's super underrated and might feature Anthony Hopkins at his most deranged. Okay, I, I was saying, like, is that the Anthony Hopkins one? Um, I'd be down for that if he still gets Anthony Hopkins <laughs> at his current age. I would love to see that. Uh, I saw it years ago. I remember liking it. I don't remember it being, like, fantastic, but I remember it was just odd enough to say, yeah, th th this is pretty bizarre and doing its own weird thing, and I, I, I dug it. I liked it. C Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. I don't think this is a spoiler. It's not, because it's trending all over Twitter, but the end credits of Secret Invasion uses AI art, and people are mad. <laughs> As they um, should be. Marvel has I, enough money to actually pay artists to do real work. And yet they don't. You see all the CG artists <laughs> getting mad at that and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, they... They shouldn't, because, I mean, right, it's taking stuff from the internet and putting this new yeah. image together, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, that's weird that they would do it. It's, uh, I feel, but it's also fascinating. I wish there was a way it's, like, you can do AIR, AIR, but you can't make money on it. Like, maybe that's a good compromise, because I am fascinated what it would put together. Like, that is intriguing, but at the same time, yes, it's taking stuff from artists that, I've drawn this and worked, you know, hours, even days on this stuff. And, you know, there's no credit. Or if it would give the credit to the people like the artwork it came from, maybe that would help. Because I do find it fascinating. But you're right. It's not fair to the artists that, that drew it and everything. Dub the Wiser, thank you for the 100 bits. Love the Gorillaz t-shirt, Doug. What are your five favorite musical artists? God. Uh, and then that gets tricky because I also, like... See, like, I want to put in some metal bands, and I want to put in some gorillas, and I want to put in some film composers, and I want to put in, like, Mozart and Beethoven and stuff. It's like, I don't know. I It's 
It's if you were to ask me of a favorite movies, I can tell you that with music, I think like how some people can't say their favorite movies because it's like, man, it's just such a grand, big, you know, hard to answer question. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with me and music. I can talk about ones I like and in terms of metal. I like, you know, Metallica, and Rob Zombie um, in terms of classical music, you know, like uh, Mozart, you know, and Beethoven um, in terms of, uh, you know, kind of abstract stuff like this. I don't even know what you would call gorillas, I guess kind of. Abstract, like pop, pop, kind of. pop yeah. alternative. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a uh, night wish. I really, really enjoy film composers. I'm still a sucker for Danny Elfman and uh, Hans Zimmer. I think is amazing. Um, that I gotta get his name, but the dude who did the Spider Verse movies is unbelievable. I gotta get those soundtracks. Um, so I mean, that's just a taste. Uh, yeah, that like that's what comes to my mind. But yeah, to narrow it down, just my all time favorite. Yeah, man, I don't know if I could do it. Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. Kind of curious how Secret Invasion is going to work with centered mostly Nick Fury. The original storyline was much more than an Avengers level threat and had a huge consequences to the Marvel Universe, leading to Norman Osborn taking over S.H.I.E.L.D. and assembly an Avengers team comprised of villains. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel bad because I didn't even know, like, it came out. Uh, I remember seeing some ads for it a while ago, but then, like, I haven't really seen any after. I don't even know, like what the plot i think it's just nick fury like running away from shield i think because i think i saw him with like you know sort of like scruffy clothes and like i like he's incognito or something like i don't even know what it's about thank you chat chat is letting you know that daniel pemberton did the spider verse soundtrack that sounds right yeah check out stuff if you haven't <laughs> remember his name better than i can Small Movie World, thank you for the 420 bits. Heather, what's the biggest thing you miss about teaching, aside from not dealing with Doug's bullshit on a weekly basis? <laughs> she Listen, loves it. <laughs> I would much rather deal with any of the bullshit that Doug and Channel Law, like Doug or anyone else hands me, <laughs> than some of the Karens I've had to deal with as being a teacher. <laughs> Just give me any of Doug's shenanigans any day over that. <laughs> That's how you met my wife's a therapist. And sometimes she'll, you know, treat kids and say the same thing. She's like, the kids are fine. The parents are ridiculous. <laughs> are the uh, but, but I mean, that's a good question. What's your favorite thing? Well, what's the thing you miss the most? I just miss the students. Like you mm. get to, you get to know them so well and you get to watch them grow up, especially since I used to teach middle school and I would have them, sorry, just hit the microphone. I would have them through sixth, seventh and eighth grade. So mm. being able to see them, like grow and evolve throughout the whole year like that's the kind of stuff that i miss that's very cool yeah small movie oh i just read that sorry talkative carl thank you for the hundred bits heather i know comics and cocktails is coming soon but have you considered skipping the 10 minute non-spoiler part i only ask because if you're reviewing a movie especially an anticipated one maybe don't watch it yet wait what no, I mean, I just like having the we just like having the non spoiler part for comics for awesome comics and cocktails because like not everyone has seen the movie. You know what I mean? And like even just talking 10, 15 minutes about no spoilers, like whether or not people would think it's worth seeing or not, I think is valuable. I also think it's, in my opinion, I think it's a talent and a, a skill in many respects to talk about it without mentioning spoilers because a lot of people say well, what counts as a spoiler, what doesn't count and stuff like that. Can you still word it in a way that's getting the point across without giving anything away necessarily? And I, I think that's really cool. I like kind of finding, it forces you to find a different way to talk about something, uh, which I like. Yeah, so we won't be skipping that. Uh, Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. While you've made it clear that Andrew Garfield is your favorite Spider-Man, who would you say is your second favorite live action Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire or Tom Holland? Tom Holland, um, especially now that he's like growing older and he's really looking like him. He's looking like Peter Parker. Um, yeah, but I had to wait until we got to like No Way Home because I'm like, we see him as a kid so many times. I had to see, you know, when he becomes a Spider-Man, what's he like, you know? <laughs> like, that's the name of the character. I want to see him as a Spider-Man. Uh, so, yeah, now that he's, I feel like he's gotten there, um, I, I, I do like him uh, a great deal. Noah Zinner, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, which and when is the next con you plan on attending? There is one called Fan Expo Dallas. Please check that one out if you have the chance. Uh, I'll try to look into it, um, but I think we got one in Michigan near the end. Of the, I get, I've been so bad, at, especially with the studio stuff. I just mm -hmm. haven't been looking into it as much um, because, again, I did, didn't know what we be needed for with the studio and stuff. So, uh, yeah, sadly, not a ton this year. I'm going to try and 
look into it more next year. But if you do want us at a con, you know, just literally go to the con, email them, say, hey, we want these people to come out to, you know, uh, you know, that'll definitely help out. But uh, yeah, no, it, it's something where I should, I should get on it more too. I, I should definitely look more into it. Small Movie World, thank you for the 420 bits. What's your favorite Family Guy cutaway joke? For me, the one where the three gentlemen are sitting reading papers and clearing their throats. First time seeing that back in high school, it literally made me fall out of my chair, rolling on the floor laughing. There's one where <clears throat> I think it's like somebody stumbles across Cookie Monster and he has a spoon full of cookie dough and he's lighting it with a lighter and he's like, don't look at me! <laughs> I thought that was pretty phenomenal. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Overall, how would you rank the kids shows you've binged, though, uh, th binged through, sorry, those being Gravity Falls, Adventure Time, Steven Universe, Owl House? I think I just rated it earlier. Uh, Steven, Steven Universe is objectively the best, hands down. Uh, but my favorite's probably Gravity Falls. Um, but so, but the, but Adventure Time is the most influential. God, this is harder than I thought. Um, I'd probably say Gravity Falls is my personal favorite, followed by Steven Universe, then Owl House, and then Adventure Time. Uh, but I'm not saying those are the best. Those are just my personal favorite. Dino Mike, thank you for the 100 bits. Today's Nintendo Direct did not disappoint. Can't wait for the upcoming Mario titles. Also, is there an upcoming NC review for the recent Super Mario Brothers movie? Yeah, I just saw it was out and I was just like, oh shit, I should probably review this. <laughs> so it's not going to be like the next, it'll be like maybe, I don't know, three weeks from now, something like that, because we have to get them in early. Um, yeah, it, it, it's coming. <laughs> Jpith, thank you for the 100 bits. What's a cliche that's super small, but also super annoying to you just for the sheer amount of movies that do it? Mine has to be the classic line, hey, you ever get the feeling we're being watched right now? Seriously, why would anyone assume that? Um, I know Rob really hates when somebody says, I got this, or you got this. I never figured out why. I always thought like, it was nothing. There's something about when a character says I'm back or we're back or something like that. There's something so like, I don't know, it just presuming like, yes, I am so important. I will announce I'm back. And all of you will be like, wow. Like, I, I may not even know who you are. Why am I going to be like, oh my God, you're back. I don't know. It's a weird thing. It's a stupid, weird thing. In Ghostbusters too, when like Janine picks up the phone, she's like, Ghostbusters, yes, we're back. And I'm like, well, what was your guy on the line saying? Just, what? You're back? I thought this was a pizza place. Like, I don't know why that gets under my skin whenever somebody's like, they're back or I'm back. <laughs> like, I don't know why. It's very pompous somehow. That Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. I checked out The Land Before Time for the first time ever a few days ago. It was really good, but if I had to nitpick, I was shocked that it was only just over an hour long and Ducky really got under my skin fast. Every time she said, <laughs> yep, 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 I felt like taping her mouth shut. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I guess I won't touch that one if you know what happened to the actress. You know what? Don't look that up. <laughs> don't. Give me the rest. Yeah, really don't. Um, but uh, no, I actually forgot it was only an hour long. Uh, uh, that's actually really surprising. I haven't seen that movie in a bit. Uh, is it really only an hour? Wow. Um, that's impressive because it feels like so much happens in it. Uh, I just remember the animation being so good and the story feeling so grand and everything. Yeah, I should put it on again, actually. I can I got to look that up. Is it really? I mean, you do the next one. I just, I got to see. Small That's Movie it. World, thank you for the 420 bits. I know you're a fan of the 2020 remake, as am I. So what's your thoughts wow. on the original 1933 Invisible Man? It's personally my favorite classic universal horror movie. Grateful for James Rolfe for the introduction way back when. Uh, you know... It's another one of those where I've seen it in pieces. I have not seen the whole thing in order all the way through it. I probably should, because um, I've seen most of the Universal monster movies, and I should sit down and just watch uh, all of that. But, um, yeah, the remake, I really do feel like, is one that, like, even I sometimes forget, like, oh, yeah, that came out, and it's spectacular. Like, I always forget that, you know, because I think it came out, like, just at the beginning of the pandemic, I think. And... Um, yeah, man, I just always forget how good that one is. Yeah, uh, and you know what? It should make me see the original all the way through, so I probably will on your recommendation. Thank you. 
Jpit, thank you for the 100 bits. Has there ever been an instance where you started writing a script for a nostalgia critic and slowly realized that you had already reviewed it years ago? No, there are times where I'll realize I've done a joke before. Even I swear, it wasn't until like today that I realized it. Uh, one of the jokes in the review today is like the count from Sesame Street pops in and says, that's four, four times that joke doesn't work. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And I'm like, I feel like I did that somewhere, but I can't remember. Um, so yeah, I don't know. If somebody's seen that joke before, um, you know, like in a video I've done, let me know. Cause uh, yeah, I'm like, did I do that one? I'm pretty sure. I mean, we've been doing it 16 years. At some point, a joke's going to repeat. Rancy Gaming. Oh, Chad is letting you know it was in the Cat in the Hat review. Ah, okay. All right. So it was in one of them. Okay. All right. Good to know. Apologies. <laughs> Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. I love Bellows in the Owl House because of his backstory. Um, now, the rest of this is just spoilers about what his whole backstory is. I feel mm. like Owl House has been out long enough that maybe mm. we, I could just continue I, or I, no. I, I think anyone that doesn't want to know, well, we'll give you the thumbs up when we're done. But yeah, it's been out for like years now, I think that episode. <laughs> He was born in the time of the witch trials, and when his older brother fell in love with a witch, he thought that he was under a spell, so he killed his brother. He then sees all witches as lesser than him, so he spends centuries on a planet of mass extinction and then clones and kills his brother en masse. Yeah, I mean, I know all that. The story's there. It's the... For a series that's very much saying don't judge things on surface level, not all things that you think are evil are evil, give them a chance and stuff, for them just to be like, well, except that guy, he's evil. Yeah, 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 nothing, nothing. I mean, there's no good in him at all. I mean, we're barely even gonna like try to show him as human. I mean, it's just nothing good at all. And that bothers me. I, I really feel like if you're gonna dive into this and you really wanna get this point across, you can definitely show he's beyond saving. That's possible. But I just feel like they didn't even make an attempt to show him as human. And I think that's bothersome because then people kind of think, well, that that can't happen to me. That's not me, you know, kind of thing. It's like, no, it can, it can happen to anyone, you know? So um, for a show that has that message, I, I, that was hard for me to get behind, even though it's very clear, again, what, what it's all symbolic for and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that, that's one of the major things that bothered me. Uh, about it. So, okay. If anyone that's watching, we're done. <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Do you think Kevin Feige really should consider getting an apprentice? Because God forbid something happens to him, Marvel Studios will tank hard or delegating the work between a few trusted people. <laughs> I was going to say, well, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Disney in general has not been doing that great. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Um, I think it's probably good to have other. I'm sure they do have other people under right. and stuff like, like that. The same I mean, way, not to be like the same way that everything wrong with Star Wars is not Kathleen Kennedy's fault. Everything mm. that's good with Marvel is not solely because of Kevin Feige. Mm, yeah, uh, no, it, it's one of those things where uh, they got tons of people under them and, and stuff like that. But uh, the one advantage to when Disney does hit this rough patch, which they do, and they've been around so long, they have hit this rough patch so many times and so much worse than they have right now uh, is that it does force them to think differently, try different stuff, think outside the box, panic a little bit in a way that I think can be good. You know, just, yeah, just try anything. I don't know anything. And like, sometimes you get good material out of that. Sometimes you get bad material too, but uh, I don't know. It, it, Disney is a fun company to watch because they have just had those major peaks and valleys to a point where now that they are kind of they're definitely slumping in my opinion but it's not even like the worst slump because again this isn't awful material it's just very mid or underwhelming uh i'm curious to see how they're going to pull themselves out of it because they've done it in the past and i feel like they'll do it again Small Movie World, thank you for the 420 bits. For both of you, obscure slash lesser, no lesser known films or shows that you love that you always recommend to others when you can. I'm a huge fan of the indie movie Living in Oblivion starring Steve Buscemi. Doubt I would ever have heard of it. James Rolfe not mentioned it in one of his videos. I saw that movie. I remember that being pretty good. Um, there's actually there's two animes I feel like a lot of people usually don't know about. One's called uh, Kino's Journey, and there's mm. two of them, which is so strange. Uh, they did a series, and then they rebooted it. They did it again, but they changed a lot. It's almost like a sequel series. 
uh, which was interesting. And then uh, Paranoia Agent is a brilliant show, too. And, I, I mean, I, there's so many animes I haven't seen, I don't know about, but whenever I bring these two up, most people don't know them, and it's, like, the one thing I can kind of glow to be like, aha, like, I know one. They're good. They're really, really good. JPIT, thank you for the 100 bits. In addition to the annoying cliches question, I also hate whenever someone is spinning around in a circle real fast and it cuts to the person watching them bobbing their heads in unison. You might not even notice it, but literally everyone does it and I hate it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. When someone's spinning, they're like, oh, like yeah. that. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Um, you know, it never bothered me, but I can, I can see why you would get annoyed by that. <laughs> it is kind of a dumb thing to do. Fat Disney Nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. I also checked out Balto for the first time. I liked it, and I think you're a little too harsh on it. Sure, Balto wasn't part wolf, but the main point of the story about bringing the antitoxin back to the to a village to cure disease, I believe, was true. Well, I don't think you watched all of the review, because I do like it. Uh, you know, I make fun of it. It's, it's a pretty easy movie to make fun of, but uh, no, I actually thought it worked out okay. They, they had to tweak some stuff to make it better, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I actually thought it was a decent enough film for what it was. JP, thank you for the 100 bits. Everyone loves to share a rotten theater-going experience. I have to confess, I was once the cause of it. During mm. Rise of Skywalker, when they revealed that Rey was secretly Palpatine's granddaughter, without thinking twice, I immediately bought alcohol and Mystery Science theatered the rest of the movie. <laughs> Man, I was sure getting some looks. <laughs> I do. I think when we saw AI... Which, man, doesn't that title take on a new meaning now? Nowadays. Right. But uh, uh, the ending, I think, I saw with my brother and my girlfriend at the time, and we just could not believe we were seeing what we were seeing. We were kind of doing the same thing. We were just so blown away by how bad it was. And looking back, it's like, yeah, I think, yeah, that was pretty obnoxious. I think it was mainly me and my girlfriend, because I think... Rob would definitely be like, no, no, I, I was doing a little bit, but not like you two were. And it's like, yeah, that's probably fair. I think we we're probably the loudest. Talking of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. After the Flaming Hot Cheetos doc, which snack slash restaurant would you like to watch a documentary about? I'm curious about Little, De little Debbie creations. Hmm, that's interesting. After seeing uh, the John Oliver thing about uh, Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> I think that'd be pretty interesting. So the Chuck E. Cheese show of his pizza uh, stuff. Um, and it's funny because I heard a little bit of that history before, but I think I just didn't hear the details because, yeah, it's a bizarre, weird history. Um, yeah, I think that'd be fun. Um, we are going to have to pick it up just yeah. a little bit. We're an hour behind recently, or mm. currently. <laughs> Ab Tamara, Olive Garden, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Abnormal Gamer, thank you for the 100 bits. Funny story, when I went to go watch Scream 6 in theaters, I was literally the only one in the theater and was expecting someone in a ghost face costume to pop out. Has something like this ever happened to you? Uh, there was one time where the power went out in a theater and I had to go out into the hallway and sort of see, you know, if everything was okay. And so the emergency lights were on. It was when we were watching the, the bitch, you know, the horror <laughs> film. And that was a little eerie walking through just like, you know, these dark hallways, very lit, very little. And just being like, Grr -grr. Dev the Wiser, thank you for the hundred bits. What do you think are five of your favorite books? Oh man. Uh, I like The Jungle Book. I like Christmas Carol. I like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I like Animal Farm. Um, uh, man, I don't know. Um, Chuck Kumbuck, the Chuck Jones biography. I don't know. I'm just throwing a random one in there. That Disney nerd, thank you for the 100 bits. So last week I told you about Billboard, Billboard's top 100 Disney songs list. Did you check it out? And if you did, how mad were you that Hellfire wasn't on that list? Oh, is it not even on there? I just went to like the top like 20 or something like that. Oh my God, that that is crazy. Um, I Some of them I understood. Some of them I'm like, this is like a high school musical song was in like the top 10. That's weird. That's yeah. really weird. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh fan, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi guys, I really love your Kids WB review two weeks ago. I especially love Heather's reviews of Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon since I'm also a big fan of both of those shows and games. Thank you so much for that video. You all did a really good job on it. Thank you. Thank you. JPIT, thank you for the 100 bits. What's a more recent example of a movie you enjoyed that no one else really seemed to? Uh, Uncharted, fight me about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, I'll make you angry then. Ender's Game. <laughs> I, I, I really like the movie, but I have not read the book, and I hear that makes a big difference. Uh, but I really did like the movie. 
Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. How would you rank the Amazing Spider-Man villains from best to worst? Those being Lizard, Harry Osborn, and Electric. Electro. <laughs> Uh, probably Lizard, Electro, and Harry Osborn. Yeah, none of them were that great, though. Ryan C. Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. This is a follow-up to why I like Bellows in the Owl House. In, last, in the last episode... Okay, we gotta... Sorry, boop. Uh, spoilers just up, again. Yeah. Yeah. In the last episode, he said the word perdition, which means in Christian theology, a state of eternal punishment and damnation into which a sinful and unpenitent... Un penitent person passes after death, which shows how he views the... Uh, bowling, bowling less eels and it's people. Uh, I mean, I get all that. I just found them very boring. Um, I, if this came out maybe 20 years ago, I, I would love him. I'd say this is great. I just feel like I've seen this villain way too many times. Uh, but yeah, it's just not my thing. All right, we're done. Done. <laughs> Talking of Carl, thank you for the hundred bits. You should do a tier list of movies, kids, of movies kids from least to greatest. I think the kids from the first Jurassic Park and short round from Indiana Jones are one of the best movie kids. I would not want to like, I don't know. Well, no, I, there's just way too was, many too. How well, many yeah, like first of all, there's too many child actors in movies, period, end of sentence. And second of all, it feels bad to like rank children. <laughs> I I don't mind as long as we always make it clear it's only the performance. We're not judging behind the scenes. Directors, writers, just the age, all of that can play a part. I'm just judging it as an art form. I, it, I never want it to be like a personal attack, you know, kind of thing. But also, it's just too damn many. Adam Grunther, thank you for the hundred bits. Which main villain from a Spider-Man movie was worse in your opinion? Topher Grace as Venom in Spider-Man 3 or Dane DeHaan as Harry Osborn in Amazing Spider-Man 2? Uh, uh hmm. probably Dane DeHaan, because at least Topher Grace kind of looked cool as Venom, Um, but neither were very good. Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. Fun fact of Bellos' brother is that it's been theorized that the witch he fell in love with, Evelyn, is uh, Ida's, Edda's ancestor. The silhouette <laughs> of her in Hollow Mind resembles Ida's figure with her mother's hairstyle, and uh, Ida, her mom, and Evelyn have Lynn in their name. In fact, the hmm. Dana Terrace later confirmed as such after the show ended. That's kind of cool. I didn't pick up on that. That's really cool. J. Pitt, thank you for the 100 bits. Speaking of Watership Down, ever seen a movie from the same director called The Plague Dogs? Excellent fucking movie. No, I want to. I hear it's very, very good. Uh, but I have not seen it. You know, I will write down the list as well. Talkative Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. Something came to mind after watching The Flash. There's a few things left ambiguous about whether or not what matters in James Gunn's DC universe. Like if a surprise character is going to be permanent moving forward. He needs to make a statement, I think. I don't think I, James Gunn needs to make a statement. I think that was part of the point yeah. of it is to make things not clear. <laughs> I, I also think it's wise not to because like there's so many things that like just box office right now, I think to studio execs is really unpredictable. Uh, so I think things are going to change quite a bit. I think it's probably best to kind of keep things secret. So if they want to change it, they can. And that will be announced. This, so we have to do this. It's like, right. but, you can try something different. That's fine, too. Right. Keep it open and ambiguous. Yeah. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. So, Doug, if you want to add something new to Disney December for next year, you could add thing LucasArts or Disney Channel live action shows. But if you do live action shows, only do one per year to save you the mental struggle. Well, yeah. I mean, God, those shows, I'm sure, have tons of seasons, uh, too. But um, I, I was talking about LucasArts might be the next one uh, to do. Japheth, thank you for the hundred bits. Disney's Ember request, Angels in the Outfield. I have it on the list. It's hard to find, weirdly. I Is thought, it like, really? Yeah, it's not on Disney+. Plus. I tried, like, going to other areas to stream it and stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, sure, just pay, like, 20 bucks for it. I'm like, for Angels in the Outfield? Like, really weird. So I'll get around to it, because I never have seen it. Uh, and that was, like, kind of, I was the age where I, you know, should have seen it, but I just yeah. didn't have any interest. So uh, I'll, I'll check it out. But yeah, it, it's weird getting a hold of it. <laughs> That's funny. My parents might have a DVD of it, genuinely. Oh, maybe I'll borrow it from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Abnormal Gamer, thank you for the 100 bits. Have you ever thought about reviewing found footage movies? My favorites are The Blair Witch Project, Cloverfield, REC, and Unfriended Dark Web. Uh, for a nostalgia critic, I don't know... <sighs> 
I, maybe I could do like all the paranormal activity movies. That might be interesting, actually, for like Nostalgia Ween or something. Talk about all those films because I like those films for the most part. They kind of got banned as they went on, but maybe I'll do that. Brand C Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. This is a follow-up <coughs> to my last bit message about adding the Disney Channel live action show to Disney December. The reason I say only review one per year is because a lot of them have multiple seasons, but if you do add the live action show, I recommend Jesse. A lot of people grew up with it. It only has four seasons. Okay. Um, I'll see. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm sure they're fine for the age group. It, it, man, just watching that every morning, I don't, because I'm an animation guy. I like looking at the different art styles and worlds and stuff like that. It's not about just watching a kid sitcom. Might be, it's gotta, that's got to be a little weird. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Jay Fifth, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite Clint Eastwood film, acted or directed? Uh, Probably Unforgiven. I really like that. I, I think for that film to be made, to be made by him, like, you know, Mr. Western himself to kind of like, really say, hey, let's really analyze what we're doing in these movies and let's compare it to real life. I thought all that was was really fascinating. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, sorry, just got here. Uh, clue for next week's NC. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Talkative Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. After watching the Craven trailer, I'm shocked Sony is finally listening and making it rated R. I really don't want to support these movies because I don't like these ideas, but damn, did the trailer get me interested. I still don't understand how they got me to love the Morbius movie. Uh, I mean, okay, cool. It did nothing for me. <laughs> Same. I thought it looked so I, boring and generic. So ge yeah. Uh, the one thing people are pointing out that I thought was a good point. They said, why wasn't Russell Crowe this character with the accent and the look and everything? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, he's a little older, a little pudgier, but it's like, I don't know. I feel like he could almost sell it. That would be kind of fun. FBL. Thank you for the hundred bits. Thoughts on the new season of Always Sunny. Uh, it's good. I I'm not loving it. Um, as much as I've loved the other ones, but, uh, but it's still funny. I, I still love the characters, but yeah, I'm not, you know, it, it, they're not knee slappers yet, but again, we're only like what, three episodes in something like that. FBL. Thank you for the hundred bits. Who would you rather interview Adam Sandler, Amy Poehler or Steve Carell? Uh, probably Poehler or Sandler. Um, maybe Poehler, you know, Poehler cause it'd be a little bit more of a mystery to it. Sandler, everybody just says is a really nice guy and I trust him. I think he'd be fun to talk to. Uh, it, but Poehler's done quite a bit and I feel like it, it'd be fun to kind of pick her brain about like this stuff. Like, I don't know, just some parts of rec stories would be pretty damn interesting. <laughs> FBL. Thank you for the hundred bits. Do you think you'll be seeing asteroid city? Uh, I might stream it. I don't know. Unless people say I get it. It's like spectacular. You got to see it on the big screen. Uh, I'll probably just stream it. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Hello, Doug and Heather. Happy Wednesday. Really great review today. I thought it was going to be the never-ending story today. Will you do a re-review for NC in the future? Also, may we have a hint for next week's review? Uh, yes. Uh... <laughs> Man, I wonder if anyone's going to get I haven't been looking to see <laughs> what the guesses were. Um... Ba, ba, ba. Uh, and then what was the a re review oh, uh, for never ending story? Uh, yeah, I'll probably at some point review it just to review all the movies. I have it on the list. I just don't know when I'm going to do it. Talkative Carl, thank you for the hundred bits with these uber rich people sending rockets to space. What's the silliest slash fun thing you can think of to do with that kind of money? I personally would set up a street fighter slash Tekken slash Mortal Kombat style tournament with the best fighters from around the world to participate. Well, not not go see the Titanic. Um, man, uh, I you know when I was a kid, I used to think of that all the time. Like you know, like Rob and I used to do like these crazy drawings of like quote unquote the dream house. You know, like I guess like what girls yeah. do. Oh, and there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there he goes. He'll be back again. There oh, he is. <laughs> All right. Oh, I just did like, oh, I was going to so much detail about this. So um, we, we heard about um, you used to draw mansions is the last we heard. Okay. Yeah. With like, where there's like, I don't know, like a Ninja Turtle mouth who you would be like the garage and then like a giant Garfield would be like the door you open and like all the things that we loved as kids, you know, like we would draw that and like, I don't know. That was fun. Um, so something crazy like that. Uh, 
just some stupid thing that nobody else would make but brings me pleasure. <laughs> you know, I'm not exactly sure what it'd be. Something dumb like that. I'd probably spend it on extravagant travel, like just the craziest, mm. randomest, the most expensive places. Mm. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Oh, love it. Oh, my God. Uh, if, if anyone hasn't seen it, the Choose Your Own Adventure that yeah. they do with that was so funny. Oh my God. Yeah. that That's one of those shows where it's like, when I think of like great comedies, sometimes I, I forget that one. I'm just like, yeah, no, that's one. That was just so consistently hilarious. And, and the, the cast was great. Uh, uh, the jokes were great. Yeah. I, I love that show. FBL. Thank you for the hundred bits. Do you watch game shows and what's your favorite? I used to a long time ago. Uh, I did like prices, right? quite a bit that's a fun game to play along with uh actually i'll say this when i was a kid i hated jeopardy just because i knew i was bad at it and i was um, so dumb but now watching it, it's like i know some of these i know some of these answer or questions i should say and uh that's kind of neat you, you, you feel like an adult when you can answer some questions on jeopardy doug don't call my friend doug dumb okay he's not <laughs> oh i see what you're doing yeah Rancy yeah. Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. <laughs> so, Doug, I know that Nightmare Ned is on your list of next Disney December. I just wanted to tell you the only way to watch the show is through the archived episodes on YouTube. Oh, yeah, I kind of figured. I, I didn't think there was, like, a DVD release of it or anything. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Other than the NC costume, what's your favorite costume from an NC review? Uh, out of accounts, but, I, you know, it, it was uncomfortable because the hat was so tight, but I do really like that in Bison outfit. And I just thought it looked so funny. The Bison outfit in general from Street Fighter, I think, is just a really hilarious but very memorable costume. Talkative of Carl, thank you for the 100 bits. After Stan Lee passed away, I think it would be cool if the bosses at Marvel Studios got other writers slash creators at Marvel Comics to cameo in the MCU. No shade to Stan Lee, but he wasn't the only one working there. Like for the Marvels movie, have the creator of Kamala, Carol, and Monica show up. I mean, sometimes they do that. Uh, they'll have like little cameos in there, like from the creators and stuff, or, or people that it were uh, what played them in the past and everything. But uh, uh, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Uh, no. I mean, I think everybody knew Stan Lee. That's why it was such a fun thing to always spot him and get him in there. And they just started doing that from like, what was it X Men when they started doing that? Or maybe they did before then. I don't know. But um, yeah, it, it was just a fun little thing. And he w just had such personality. I think people liked pointing him out but yeah I i've seen that stuff done before where they would have like the creator of stuff uh in the film too dev the wiser thank you for the hundred bits what do you think are some of your favorite richard gear movies chicago um i'm not a big richard gear <laughs> He, he never interested me as an actor and i don't even think he's that great in chicago but it's like he's fine i guess um yeah, I don't know. He, he never grabbed me. Um, Pretty Woman's okay, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I don't have a better answer than that. <laughs> Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Is there any chance you'll ever do a freak show cinema on Doom Patrol? It's such an underrated show that not enough people talk about it needs more attention, especially when it's becoming concerning that WB isn't going to actually air the last six episodes and shelved it for a tax write-off given the last episode of the current season aired in early January. Ugh. I hope that's not the case. Um, I don't think what? it is. I thought they have a release date, but I could be wrong. Uh, also, I, I don't know. I feel like I've seen a lot of people talk about that show uh, and the fact that it got so many seasons and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I think it has its fan base. I don't know what I'm going to add to it. Uh, let, let me put it this way. If I was to do a review of it, I'd have to watch them all again, and I don't think I have the time to do that, sadly. Um but, uh, but but it is a great show, certainly. And, but I think there's people out there talking about it. Apparently I'm wrong. They don't have a release date or a trailer. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. I, I hope that's not the case. Me too. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Would you rather be a time traveler's wife or a sorcerer's apprentice? But the Nick Cage version. <laughs> uh, I think definitely the latter. Yeah. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts slash NC for Nim's Island. <clears throat> Nims Island. Um, I will at the very least try to check it out. Nims Island, 2008. Oh, uh, Little Miss Sunshine. Okay. Uh, yeah, I never even heard of this. Um, I guess I'll try to check it out. 
FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Freak show, freak show cinema idea, the movie Horns with Daniel Radcliffe and Juno Temple. Did I see that one? I didn't see it, but I heard of it for sure. Yeah, I think I remember the trailer. for. I've never seen it. I'll, I'll try to check it out. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Bowling or golfing? Uh, I'm pretty bad at both. Um, it's bowling for me. So I like getting some sun with golfing. I like you have to walk around and stuff like that. But I do like the atmosphere, the easygoing nature of bowling. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's whatever I'm in the mood for. I know, I know it's a weird thing not to be able to choose, but it's actually really tough. No, I'll say bowling for the shitty nachos. I love the shitty nachos. Haunted Joker, thank you for the 100 bits. What is the number one reason you you won't review Song of the South for Disney December. <laughs> well, well, actually, I did. And um, it's probably why my opinion's changed a little bit on it. Because uh, I think that's like, God, I don't know, like 14, 13 years ago or something like that. Um, so, because I watched it again recently, I'm just like, yeah, my review would be kind of different <laughs> from that. But um, no, it's part of its heart is in the right place but i i hear like they did have people like come in and say like you know what's the best way to represent this and stuff like that and the cat took the notes and went yeah like that and it kind of shows like they just want to do it the disney way at the time which clearly hasn't aged that great but there's good things in it um honestly the biggest complaint i usually get is that it's boring and i think that's very legit it is surprisingly a boring movie <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Who would you rather interview, Christopher Walken, Al Pacino, or Joe Pesci? Oh, Walken. Uh, even if the interview goes terribly, I think it would go great, you know? Yeah. Anything he says and does is pure gold. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. nostalgia Ween idea, top 11 Tim Burton movies. Maybe. That might not be a bad idea. Yeah, I'll think about that. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts on the movie Source Code? I've never seen it. I've never even heard of it. Uh, I try to check it out. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite thing about Chicago? Uh, architecture and the vibes. Uh, yeah, we God, got some man. great architecture here. <laughs> yeah, shit. That really is. I do like the food, too, obviously. But um, you said it with the vibe. I never feel like. Like, we're going to be in our own little bubble like anyone is, but I feel like that bubble is still just enough in the real world. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I don't know. There's so many of our states where it's like, it's just that bubble, just that state. And that's all, all they want to be, just there kind of thing. And I feel like Chicago is just enough of a mix of, like, enough things. Where I'm like, there's just enough variety in there of vibes and good vibes as well. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Who would you rather interview, Jim Gaffigan or Jim Carrey? That's rough. Um, I'll say Jim Carrey, because again, it's one of those where even if it doesn't go well, the answers will probably be interesting. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, will you do another top 11 list in the future? I got an idea for you. I've been watching the series for the first time and I'm currently loving it. Top 11 Malcolm in the Middle episodes. Oh, Malcolm in the Middle is amazing. I don't even know what the best episodes would be. They're all so good. Um... That's another one, too. I don't even know where I would get, like, necessarily footage for uh, for it, because I don't know where it's, like, streaming or if it's... I don't think it ever, they've released it on DVD or anything. Um, but uh, it is very good, and I like it so much, I don't think I could do a top 11. I don't know what my choices would be. But why don't you do one? Go ahead and make one. <laughs> FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. One must go. Waffles, pancake, Belgian waffles, or French toast? Oh, okay. Uh, waffles, regular waffles. Uh, if, if Belgian waffles is on there, yeah, then we're, we're good. Mustard Man, thank you for the 100 bits. Did you ever hear the big news from Universal Studios last week? They're doing a haunted house based on The Last of Us for Halloween Horror Nights this year. Consider my ticket purchased. Uh, yeah, I think they'll have, they'll have fun with that. The only oh, yeah. thing is that I don't know if they can get a real variety of, like, creatures. That's the only thing. Uh, because they're all just going to be those, you know, fungus creatures. But, uh, the designs of all the rooms and everything, I think they're, they're going to have fun with that, definitely. Mm -hmm. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite Weird Al song? Man. Man, I don't know. Uh, God, that's really rough. I'm trying to think what one just made me laugh the most and, like, I watched the music video for the most. Yeah, I... 
I really don't know. That's really tough. And maybe Jurassic Park, that was like one of my big intros to him. Maybe that one. But yeah, it's a tough question, weirdly. Chad is letting you know that Malcolm in the Middle is currently streaming on Roku, Disney Plus, Hulu. It's a, Wait, Disney Plus? So oh, that's got to be like... It might be international. Country. Yeah, yeah. I don't okay. know. And, and well, that makes sense if it's on Hulu because Hulu's combined in other ones. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right. No, that's good to know. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Chocolate-covered strawberries or chocolate-covered pretzels? Hmm. Pretzels for me. Probably pretzels. Yeah, the saltiness, I think, balances it out. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. Are there any Spider-Man universes that you'd like to see Miles travel to and beyond the Spider-Verse? Personally, I'd love to see them explore Spider-Ham's universe if they show it in a sort of Roger Rabbit style of mixing animation with possible live-action characters. That's not a bad idea. Uh, noir, Spider-Man noir all the way. Yeah, I'm a big Sin City fan, so I'd love to see that. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Who was hired first, Malcolm or Tamara? Oh, Malcolm, because uh, we hired him for a uh, demo reel. And uh, then we had Rachel in for that. And then she went to, uh, they both came on for Nostalgia Radio. And when Rachel was leaving, Tamara was like second for Demo Reel. So we were just like, I don't even think we need to do an audition. Like we, we were already like having a hard time choosing. There, let's just do Tamara. I think the the Catwoman review was kind of the one where we were seeing like, you know, can, let's try her here. Can we work with her? Okay, of course she was wonderful. She was awesome. So uh, yeah. It was a, a very, very easy decision. <laughs> We're going to have to super speed it. We're still 45 gotcha. minutes behind. Gotcha. Uh, Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. So, Doug, have you had another Disney Channel show? It is called Fillmore. It parodies popular police dramas of the 1970s. It's only two seasons, 13 episodes each season. You can only watch it on UK's Disney+. Plus. I hope you watch it. I heard it's good. I do want to check that out. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Fun fact, if you've ever heard of an off-screen laugh on Taxi that sounds like ha ha honk, that's co-creator James L. Brooks. Oh, that's interesting. I never knew that. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Recently watched Always Be My Maybe for the first time, and I gotta say, Keanu Reeves playing himself is one of the funniest characters I've seen in a while. Also, the rap during the end credits had me in tears. Oh, yeah, he's the best part of that movie. I like all those actors, too, but he, he was the best. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite sport to play, favorite sport to watch, and have you ever been to a Cubs game? Uh, Basketball, basketball, and yes. FBL, thank you for the 100 bits. Thoughts slash NC for the 2021 movie Chaos Walking. Never seen it. I'll try to check it out. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. What is your favorite food cuisine? Food cuisine? Yes. What does that mean? Um, I'm unsure. Maybe like <laughs> like Chinese, Japanese. Oh, uh, I'm um, not positive, though. I, I guess, uh, okay, Chinese. Sure, I like Chinese. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. This is a follow-up to my last bit message about Disney Channel Fillmore. It contains a dedicated fan base and is considered a cult hit. Okay, yeah, I, I'm nursing ads for it. I do want to check it out. JRM, thank you for the 100 bits. <clears throat> Notice the trend movies are being split into two parts. Now the new Mission Impossible at uh, Fast 10. Thankfully, it wasn't around when the Lord of the Rings movie came out because they would have done that for Return of the King. No doubt, lol. Yeah, they've been doing that a bit, even with like, you know, like Harry Potter and Twilight and stuff. So it's not that new. JRM, thank you for that Prime subscription. Welcome. Appreciate thank you. it. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Top three John Candy performances. Plane, Strains, and Automobiles, uh, Home Alone, um, just all of SC7, uh, SC17, SCTV. <laughs> Abnormal Gamer, thank you for the 100 bits. Before I forget, have you seen Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves? And also, much like Heather looks like Aya Cash, Malcolm looks like uh, Regé Jean Page. Nice. Uh, no, I have not. I do have it on the list uh, for stuff to check out. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. Just checking to see if you've watched Creed 3 or John Wick 4 yet. And if so, what are your thoughts? No, it's also on the list because it's on Amazon Prime. I really want to see it. John Wick 4 is a lot of fun. Mm. Haunted Joker, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, what is something you can tell us about yourself that your wife doesn't know? <laughs> um, I'm secretly a Scorpio. <laughs> Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. I have yet another Disney Channel show. It's called Dave the Barbarian. It only has one season, and the creator of the show created the Earthworm, Earthworm, Earthworm Jim TV show. Hope you watch it. I've seen a little bit of that. If it's only one season, I might check out the whole thing, actually. Rancy Gaming, thank you for the 100 bits. Are you going to get Scott the Waz to help you review the new Mario movie? <laughs> uh you know i'm actually just doing a crossover right now so probably not, uh, not with him with someone else but uh yeah i think that'll be a little too many back to back 
Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. This might be tricky, Doug, but what are your top three favorite films of the 2020s so far? Across the Spider-Verse, definitely. Um, hmm. Uh, 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 and then the other one, uh, uh, No Way Home, actually, I really, really like. Uh, there you go. Yeah, the Spider-Mans, I guess. Constable Gamer, thank you for the raid. Appreciate it. Thank you. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Definitely check out The Land Before Time again, Doug. It's turning 35 this year. You can do an NC review, too. Hopefully you do it in the future. Oh, uh, maybe. Might not be a bad idea. Honest Reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. In regards to the Owl House not showing the human side of Bellows, I'm sure they plan to do a full episode diving into his backstory, similar to what Gravity Falls, since they both have the same team, until the studio canceled them <laughs> and they had to settle with the portraits in a hollow mind. I don't know if that's it, because they did kind of go into his backstory a little bit. I think that was the time to do it. I don't know. I could be wrong. Cameron, thank you for the 100 bits. Hi, Doug. In celebration of the release of Across the Spider-Verse, would you be able to do an NC of Into the Spider-Verse? I definitely want to do Across the Spider-Verse. I got to see if I want to do Into, because uh, I think it's kind of self-explanatory why that one's good. Across, I feel like I could really talk in great detail about even more. Coburn, thank you for the 100 bits. Superheroes have to be the low fruit of entertainment because it's just copying someone's homework and changing it a little bit. It's not humanizing real life issues one can relate to as in does someone with special effects that's unreal. Uh, it depends who's doing it. Sometimes definitely. Yeah. But uh, I, I think with any genre, if you get somebody that's good at it and can bring something new, then uh, you can really get something special. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, comics also tackle, tackle those issues. So I don't know if it just is the low-hanging fruit. Anyway, yeah. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. What are your top three favorite Dan Aykroyd performances, and why are they all Yogi Bear? <laughs> uh, I do like him in Ghostbusters. I like um, The Great Outdoors. I kind of liked him. And here's a weird one, Dragnet. I thought he was so funny doing that voice the whole time. Abnormal Gamer, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite movie plot, old man who's depressed and takes care of a little kid while slowly becoming attached to said kid. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of sick of that. And I, I know why they do it. It's very hard not to get invested. But yeah, got, got I've done to death. Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. I'm not sure if somebody's already asked this, but can we expect an untitled review show of Elemental or will it not be until disney December? It's going to be disney December. I don't think anyone's demanding me to do it. <laughs> Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. So with Al House, what do you think of Amity's parents? Um, Alador, her absent-minded inventor of a father, and her mother, Odalia, the bitch? <laughs> uh, it's, they're fine. I, it is one of those where I feel like in a longer season, they could explore them more, certainly. But they were done fine. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Favorite Richard Dreyfus role? It's a tie for, for me as Mr. Glenn Holland from Mr. Holland's Opus and the writer from Stand By Me. I still haven't seen Mr. Holland's Opus. I gotta see that. Um, Dreyfus is another one I don't get into. And Jaws, I, I'll say that. He was pretty good on that. Farkface, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, I'm putting my first opera on next year. It's deliberately over the top, swearing, violence, dark file themes. I'm excited. If I sent you a video, would you watch it? Uh, yeah, I'll do my best. <laughs> Alexander, thank you for the 100 bits. Top three favorite Steven Spielberg movies. Oh, man. Last Crusade, Jurassic Park. Um, oh, a third one. I don't know. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. John, thank you for the 100 bits. Liked your review tonight. Any chance you'd review what's arguably Hugh's best movie, The Breakfast Club? Uh, maybe. I, I'm i not the biggest fan of that movie. Um, it, what they're talking about is very real. The way they're talking about it is a little strange, but I still respect it a great deal. Alex Loves Musicals, thank you for the 100 bits. Netflix released still Im still images of the Avatar The Last Airbender characters. They look more accurate than the Shyamalan movie we got, but I don't know why we need a live-action show. I agree, and the fact that they look so much like the cartoon concerns me because Cowboy Bebop did too. I was just um, going to say, I got burned with Bebop with that. <laughs> yeah, but it is nice to see. It is very nice to see them like, there they are in 3D, like it's cool. Sailor Aaron, thank you for the 100 bits. Doug, please check out the documentary series on Netflix, American Manhunt, the Boston Marathon bombings. For the few documentary series I've seen, it's really good. I also liked casting John Benet. Okay, I'll try to check it out. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. What is your favorite Weird Al movie parody song? Personally, I'd say it's Jurassic Park. <laughs> I mean, I said Jurassic Park is my favorite, so I guess I have to go with that. I really like Yoda a lot, too. Adam Grunther, thank you for the 100 bits. What is your favorite collab that you've done with Phantom Strider? Uh, 
timing's impeccable. Um, I would say, uh, uh Bright just, I, I like the Dark Tunes one because I like him giving uh info on something that I'm not like, I like, but I'm not the most knowledgeable about. So, uh, that was pretty fun. Hana Joker, thank you for the hundred bits. Heather, could you say FBL? Thank you for the hundred bits. I didn't hear it enough. <laughs> just kidding. FBL, love to everyone. Yeah, of course, <laughs> love to everyone. We appreciate everyone. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, I, I've read that really fast and panicked, so oh, we're not <laughs> caught up anymore. There we go. Now we're Kenton play stuff. Thank you for the hundred bits. Consider the following for the Craven movie: a character gets powers from an animal and uses those powers to fight people harming animals at an evil company where the main villain has a terrible skin condition. Craven is just the Catwoman movie in twenty twenty three. I could totally see them doing that. Um, yeah, I could totally see that being a thing. All right. Well, I guess we do have some time for highlighted. All I just right. really saw we were still 45 minutes behind and panicked. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, I, I get it, man. Yeah. Just rush it. I get, it. I feel like you got the hard side of the job, man. You got to just read all of that just so quickly, man. So yeah, no, I, I always appreciate it. A uh, dino man says favorite gravity falls joke. Mine is I eat kids, the batteries joke and the fairy drug joke. I love the, uh, Actually, I really want this poster. The more I think about it, the read poster where it's a book reading a book and they're both just screaming at each other like, what the hell is this? Honest reviewer, thank you for the 100 bits. I hope you enjoy Spectacular Spider-Man. Fair warning, you'll probably need an episode guide because Disney Plus has some of the episodes out of order. Seriously, uh. Disney Plus first Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes and now this wouldn't be such a big deal if both these shows weren't serialized. Okay, okay, that's good you pointed that out then. Okay, I will uh, definitely look at episode guide before I uh, watch them then. Ramirez says, and you don't necessarily have to do this, please do Mickey Mouse arguing with Bugs Bunny over this past weekend. And Heather says, Spider-Man bitch, and punches them. Maybe get off Sony's ass. <laughs> Gosh, you know, I mean, we still own the world. We have so many studios. We're doing fine. Everything's doing fine. Yeah, you say that, but we got like the new DCEU coming up. Oh, well, the first one was so good. Spider-Man, bitch. That's all, folks. Um, Matt Gamer says, just wondering, is it possible to invite you guys to an anime expo or you just do specific conventions? Oh, just a, the, the anime ones used to be the one like the early days. That's like all we were invited to. Uh, for some reason, the anime cons really, really liked us. Uh, so, yeah, no, we, we've done plenty of them. We could uh, definitely do more. Yeah, you're good, FBL. You're totally fine. Don't worry about it. We know that it was just that's how they came. We know. Yeah, we know. You're all good. <laughs> uh, Alexander, thank you for the hundred bits. Any chance we'll see a review of the SpongeBob movie coming soon? Just wondering. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, Lord R. Wolfen says, have you guys ever got the chance to see Spy Family? Trust me, it's such a good series that my mom, who is not a fan of anime, really enjoys. Yeah, I just started the second season. Um, I just started the episode where they, or finished the episode where they get the dog. Um... That's right. I do remember. It's really good. This. Yeah, I heard it was really, really good. I forgot about it, though. Yeah, so that's a good uh, reminder. What do you watch it on? Uh, Hulu. Hulu? Okay. Oh, it's on Hulu. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I got. I got to definitely check that out then. Okay. Master Mario asks: Are there any books you are surprised haven't been adapted into movies yet? Uh. Hmm. Man, I'm trying to. You know, it, it, I bring it up so much, and it's. Yeah, how big has there been a big screen movie? Uh, Animal Farm. I'm kind of shocked. I am, and I'm not, because I think the ending is such a downer. And usually, whenever they do a telling of it. They always try to put a little bit of a spin, like kind of a happier spin on it. And I see why they do it. And because of that, I see why people can't kind of stay away from it, too. But, uh, yeah, just that that downer ending is just amazing. It's an unbelievable ending. So, uh, yeah, I like to see a version that just really like just stuck with kind of the dread of that. <laughs> uh, I know a guy says saw Ruby Gillen because of the mystery movie. It was mid. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like a best case scenario to me. I'm really shocked so many people are excited for it. I, it just really, I, I was looking at Rob when, when I was showing, taking him to Across the Spider-Verse and the trailer came out. And I'm just like, I'm not crazy, right? That just looks like shit, right? And he's like, it don't look like much to me. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm not nuts. 
Power Gamer says, so I know you don't, you didn't warm up to Bellows, but did you ever warm up to Hunter? Personally, he's one of my favorite characters. He's fine just for what that character, it's an angsty character connected to the villain. That's a bad guy. That's gonna go through a change. It's, I mean, it's all archetypes we've seen. And again, it's, here, the thing with Bellus is not that he's even like that awful a character. It's that he's just been done to death where all the other elements in the show were kind of things that have been done and then they combine them with other things to kind of make something new. And that's what was exciting to me about it. So whenever that character came around and all the minions and henchmen, all that stuff around him, we're just doing stuff I've seen a million times, especially in these shows. It just felt very underwhelming, but it's a family show. It's for kids as well and adults. And it's like a lot of them haven't seen a lot of these shows. So I still give it a pass. I'm not saying it ruins it, but may I got like maybe one more of these in a show or a movie where it's just an a-hole who's prejudiced, you know, being the oppressor and nothing new is done with it. You know what I mean? Before I yeah. say, okay, this is actively bad. Elite Gamer says, hello, Heather and Doug. Hope you're both doing well. How's the studio doing? Also, Transformers Rise of the Beast, bitch. Everyone's so mean. Uh, they're finally working on it. <laughs> so Yay. Yay. Yeah, how far out. But uh, yeah, so that's good. Dino Man says, could you review other Batman movies like Batman 66, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and the Lego Batman movie? Uh... Lego Batman, even though I liked it, I don't think I can add that much to it. I've talked about maybe doing like a super month where I talk about the rest of the Christopher Reeves Supermans and then end on like the Snyder Cut. I think that might be kind of cool. Um, and then what was the other one? Uh, oh, Batman, uh, the 60s movie. Uh, I might do that. That might be fun to do. Just just kind of a lark. <laughs> Uh, yes, Lamb Team or Yes La Team says, I just wanted to ask Doug if he's ever seen the young Sherlock produced by Spielberg. It's so close to Harry Potter. Funny enough, it was written by Chris Columbus. Uh, years ago. I don't remember it that great, except I think that was the first time, one of, definitely one of the earliest, maybe the first time CG was used in the movie, the stained glass, uh, night coming to life. Uh, and it was pretty creepy. They did a good job for like the first time that was used. Uh, but I remember being good. I just don't remember a ton about it. Um, Doug just got to say, mm. oh, sorry, this was Spooky Elephant. I was just reading the message without saying who said it. Uh, mm. Says, Doug, I just got to say, I loved your cover of My Way. <laughs> yes. Uh, again, uh, AI must be stopped because more horrific things like that uh, can be put together. No. Have you heard that, Heather? The, no. It, it's... It, they, they have my voice now on AI and they have me singing songs and one of them is my way and it's pretty great. All right. <laughs> it's just like, but you can tell they're taking it like from me talking. So everything is like, I did it my way. <laughs> you know, like the way I had senses. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> A random cartoon fan says, how about an NC review of Chicken Run with the sequel coming out? Maybe. I like that movie. It's another one I don't love, but it's good. It's a good flick. I just don't think I can add that much to it. Abnormal Gamer says two things. The favorite movie plot I mentioned was a question. I'm sorry if that wasn't clear. Also, Netflix might screw up Avatar, but One Piece I'm hopeful for. One Piece looks like a live action anime, which is exactly what it's doing. So I don't know. We'll see. I've never actually watched much of much of One Piece, but that trailer did look kind of interesting. I was going to say, I wonder what the reaction was to that, because I've never seen the show. I've only seen bits and pieces, and, and it looks surreal. Uh, so I wasn't sure what people were going to think of that. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then a uh, favorite, uh, was it plot trope? Was that it? Or kind of uh, like... Pl movie plot. Movie plot. Um, I, I do kind of like the, you know, whatever, older person looking after the tiny... Big person looking after the tiny person. I mean, that is... It's hard not to get invested in that, but uh, yeah, it's just being done too much. It's just uh, been overdone. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess, uh, I don't know if it counts, but just like experimental animation, I'm just all over right now. I think because of Across the Spider-Verse and Puss in Boots, and you know, I've always leaned heavy more towards hand-drawn animation over CG, even though CG is great. So I love this mix that they're doing. They're really trying to experiment more with CG and do what kind of hand drawn can't exactly do or even mix with it. And I love that. So yeah, I, I definitely want more of that. All right, cool. And that brings us to eight 
o'clock. Thank you all so much as usual for joining us here today. We super appreciate it. Uh, we do have content here five days a week. So please come on back Monday through Friday. We will be here just waiting for you. All I do is sit in front of this computer and wait to talk to you all. Please, please Give go her back. Attention. She needs attention, <laughs> not me. I got too much, but she needs the attention. <laughs> Um, we are going to go over and raid Tamra. Um, so let's go say hello to Miss Tamra Chambers. Um, but Definitely yeah. Definitely join us this Friday stream for Jedi Survivor because something big is coming. I just yes. heard. Yeah. No, no, no. He's like, you got to stop here, Doug, because something big's coming. Now it's like, okay, okay. So there's some sort of big something, holy shit, in the next time I play Jedi Survivor. Something big in the story there. So uh, see my reaction, goddammit. See it yeah. live. Do it. <laughs> all right, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your evening, and we will see y'all later. Bye-bye. Goodbye. 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 Thank you.